I said, why me? I ate, I ate organic food. I was good to the earth. I was a milk hauler and watched all these beautiful farms go away. We are a very foolish society. We had a sustainable lifestyle here. Paul? Oh, okay, I did see you there, Paul. Okay, again, Mary, uh, Mary, 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 Mary Larry, Mary Larry, <laughs> McDonald, Eric Bry. I'm going to be saying that now from now on, Larry. Uh, Jeff, Simon, Marvin Defoe. Uh, Jackie Rowe. So we'll just get a few in, in the queue. Uh, Paul Domain. Thank you very much for, uh, for, uh, for coming here to Northern Wisconsin and uh, listening. I was noting yesterday, and my name is Paul Domain. I'm a resident of the, the Couture Ojibwe Reservation at Hayward, Wisconsin, on the local mining impact committee, involved in a lot of things in the local community. Yesterday we were talking uh, with some members of the Couture Tribal Council and we asked a simple question, uh, where is our state senator on this issue? And most of them says, we're counting on Bob Jauk, Senator Bob Jauk, to do this right because he's always been here to listen to us. And I had to correct him and say, excuse me, but uh, Senator Jerry Petrowski, a Republican senator out of Wausau, is our representative. And uh, the members of the governing board said, well, that's interesting, he hasn't talked to us, he hasn't been here, we haven't seen him. And uh, that's only halfway between Wausau and northern Wisconsin. So there seems to be an absence of uh, people wanting to come here. And I'm glad that you came here because listening to people uh, uh, like the other person that stood around here and said it, it's interesting to see people that I know and have seen uh, in and out of Mellon and Hurley. Uh, some people says, you know, we should be boycotting those businesses up in Mellon and Hurley because they're supporting the mine. And I says, no. I like to go up there and have a beer and a burger every now and then. I mean to continue to do that because those are people from northern Wisconsin that are part of our extended family. And uh, in a way, uh, we've talked about how people have come and gone over ages, but the Ojibwe people are still here. And they're simply tired of having to have their resources compromised when they want to feed themselves, when they want to take care of their family. We also understand what's gone over on in that district where there's been a boom and bust from the mining industry over the years. And we ask the question, is it worthwhile to invite your children back for 10 or 15 or 20 years again because they've left the community to get a job only to have to move their family out again after 20 or 30 years when that ore deposit is gone? And the Ojibwe people say, no, maybe someday the ability to give that ore deposit up will be worthwhile. Is the United States at war and needed for some reason? If it puts our rice in jeopardy, if it puts our walleye in jeopardy, walleye and other fish that in some cases you can't eat because they're already tainted with mercury and other pollutants that haven't been cleaned up. We haven't cleaned up Lake Michigan yet from the sewage that flows into it. Rather than creating another burden that we might have to clean up, uh, we're hoping that uh, people are thinking about looking in another direction. The process has been tainted. And originally when I first heard the proposal of mine, I thought I'd hear it out. Looking at the geology, the watersheds and things, I became skeptical of it. But at this particular point, I don't think there needs to be any changes in any of the laws that have gone into this. And part of it is because there has been no dignity in the process, despite the fact that our new representative leader, Mary Williams, uh, was responsible for holding hearings, uh, they didn't call them for here where the impacts are going to be. The process has been tainted because of the money that's been given to politicians, and now politicians feel inclined that they have to deliver something. So rather than having an industry come and go and our children come and go, we need to really sit down and think about building some future in which as much time and as much money, if these companies have given $15.6 million to the politicians, and who knows what else the rest of the budget is, and how many hearings were held in Milwaukee and Madison in time, if as much time was invested in trying to create those long-term jobs, as was invested in trying to create this short-term burst, and people running around with big overinflated checks, $73,000, that's great. But most people I know really don't want that. What they want to be able to do is provide for their families. And so somewhere I heard an idea 
For some reason, I keep thinking it might have been Marvin Defoe back there with the war paint on wherever he is, said something about a heritage park. And we thought, we're looking for the courageous legislators that would stand up and say, why don't we acquire that ore body in that area, perhaps turn it into a heritage park in which we can create 500 years of jobs that are there for a long, long time. And we can go up there, enjoy that, and learn about each other. We can go into those old shafts that, you know, big chunks of metal were taken out because what I hear is this open pit, mountaintop, whatever it is, is a very, very different process compared to the old mining techniques. That's the difference. And when we jeopardize the wild onions, when we jeopardize the squirrels, the rabbits, the elk, the walleye, the potential loss to 40,000 pounds of wild rice in the river system and the lakes of this area, that's too big of a potential price to pay for the Ojibwe community that relies on those resources. And not just the Ojibwe community, a lot of non-natives who also subsist on those resources. So let's put our head together and not hate each other for the positions we take, but let's work together because I'd like to see Mellon and Hurley and Iron County prosper and get better and have jobs and families could be raised and stay there. But I think the idea of this mine here, there's too many considerations about what other corporations are going to want those exemptions? How many other mining companies are going to come into northern Wisconsin? What about the vanadium deposit in Surrey County and over here and other places that are delicate? I think people have said it. It seems like a Trojan horse of some kind that's going to open up things that 50 years from now people are going to say, I'm not sure I would have wanted to have been part of the process now that I've seen what's happened. So let's be careful. The Iroquois people and other native people used to sometimes say the best decision to make is no decision at all. Let's set it aside for a while and rest on it. Miigwech. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're listening to a live broadcast from Wisconsin Public Radio and WRNC about Democratic and Republican iron ore mining bills from the American Inn at Ashland here on 90.9 WWS and 91.3 KUWS in Superior. Good morning, thanks for being here. It's WRNC uh, in Ashland. Nice to have someone listening to Northern Wisconsin. Janet and Bob do all the time. Nick does, but the rest of you were very pleased you're here. I'm Larry McDonald. I am mayor of a city of Bayfield, long-term mayor. Um, I'm active in Great Lakes issues in a whole variety of ways. And a quick background, members of our family first settled in Superior and Bayfield area in the 1870s, 1880s, and some of them went up to the Iron Range in Minnesota, and some to the Twin Cities. So I'm familiar with a variety of aspects of uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin, and a little bit on mining. I'm opposed to SB1 and AB1. Um, for many of the reasons already been suggested, it does not protect what we have. There, these are very complex issues, and the potential is very long-lasting detrimental effects. I've got a comment, an observation, and a bit of advice. Do no harm to Lake Superior. If we take that as a starting point, we all win. 10% of the world's fresh surface water is in Lake Superior. It's hard to imagine. You look right outside, and 10% of all the fresh water, surface water in the entire world is there. We can't screw it up. We get one chance in this life for this. Give you an idea, if, if uh, polluted contaminants water gets into Lake Superior, it takes 191 years to flush a drop of water out of Lake Superior. It takes a long time. Once we get it in, we're in trouble. Um, an observation here. In general, the words used to promote the Bayfield area is Bayfield and the Apostle Islands where the water meets the soul. You remember that? We will all win. And a little bit of advice from the Earth. Um, several years ago on Earth Day, or for Earth Day, I uh, gave every member of my staff and all of our city council uh, this hat. Mine's pretty dirty. It's been around a while. And it's... Well, I gave them a copy of it. They each got one. Um, and it says, it's advice from the earth. It says, be well-rounded, celebrate diversity, 
think globally, and there's no place like home. And to remind them who they worked with, on the back it says, uh, City of Bayfield, Office of the Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> and I do support Senator Collins' SB3. I have read through it, and I want to, I think, very simply say, you must have followed something that Albert Einstein said many years ago. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Seems like every time Tim Cullen's name is mentioned, there's applause. <laughs> he likes that. Eric, um, Eric, Eric Bry. Eric, is it? Did I get the name right? Eric. Eric, B R Y E. Is he here? No. All right. Um, um, Jeff, Simon, S Jeff. Okay, a couple, one of those was to, Marvin Defoe. I know Marvin is here. Good morning. Good morning. Which one's the middle mic? <laughs> The one, on the, right. the, one the, the one in the middle. All right. <laughs> what do I say? Been here many times. Spoken many times in front of a variety of hearings. Had hours and hours of meetings with, with, with state officials. And hours and hours of meetings with our lake. <laughs> Pollution has no bias. Pollution doesn't matter if you have brown skin, white skin, yellow skin, what have you. Doesn't matter. It affects us all. The paint that I have on my face is paint of peace. It's paint of peace in which who I represent with, with what our elders have taught me, with what this lake has taught me, the clouds, the earth, the fish. I lived here my whole life, as well as many people here. It is my belief in what I have been told that the human race is at the crossroads. The human race. And it just so happens that we come together in the protection of this mining bill to have a meaningful discussion. Look at the maps where mining has taken place throughout the Midwest. And you know what I discovered? I discovered there's, there's mines in Minnesota, there's mines in Michigan, and even in Canada, there's mines. What I also discovered, the northern part of Wisconsin is pure. There ain't mines. What I mean by we're at the crossroads I believe there's an opportunity for the legislators, for the state of Wisconsin, for the tribes, for the communities to leave it, leave it that way. It is my belief that we don't need no alternative mining bill. Because apparently what has happened historically with the state of Wisconsin is working. The reason why I say it's, it's working is look at the map. Look at the northern part of Wisconsin. Guess what? It's working, and it has worked. I am afraid that if we tamper with that, that there is going to be numerous interest in the mining area of exploration in northern part of Wisconsin. 
What I would propose to the legislators, if you will, to develop a bill collectively and put the amount of energy that, is, that has been put into the mining bill, I would like to see the legislators to, to create another bill that supports environmentally safe jobs here in northern Wisconsin, that creates ecotourism in the part of northern Wisconsin, that creates and takes a look at tourism as an example, and develop those jobs in northern Wisconsin. I think there's an opportunity for the state of Wisconsin to be leaders, to be leaders to take a look at solar energy, to take a look at uh, non-intrusive pollutant type of jobs that are able, able to sustain this community. That's what I'd like to see. So I'd like to see that coming out of the state of Wisconsin. So with that, I want to share in closing. I'm not used to talking more than two minutes, excuse me. <laughs> I was, uh, was going to put, uh, put a two hour limit on you today. Yeah. I'm waiting for that ball to go off. <laughs> we have a gong for you, Marvin. <laughs> but in our, in our in all sincerity, in all sincerity, I want to share with each and every one of you that when I put these markings on my face, it is a signal of peace. It's not a war. It's a signal of peace, peacefully standing up, my people, my Chippewa people, peacefully standing up on our own two feet and talking for the ones that we love, talking for the ones that we care about, talking for our children that ain't born. That's what this means. It means to stand up. And I hope we can make it through this battle. And I think the next step is to collectively, seriously talk about what really matters. And that's the human race. So with that, with that, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for being here listening to each and every one of us. And I hope, I hope that each and every one of you sitting here before us can take some time to talk to your colleagues, to talk to your colleagues and, and try to convince them, if you will, to not pass the bill and try to convince your colleagues that there's an opportunity to really create something meaningful for Northern Wisconsin. So with that, miigwetch. Miigwetch, Marvin. Thank you very much. Yeah, go ahead. Mar Marvin? Marvin. Marvin, I just wanted to say that when I spoke with you last <laughs> evening, you said you only wore your vest on special occasions. So yes. this tells me that today is a special occasion for you. Yes, it is, and I, thank you. it is a special occasion. So thank you very much, Senator. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marvin. You're listening to a live broadcast about mining legislation in Wisconsin on Wisconsin Public Radio Stations 90.9 WUWS in Ashland, 91.3 KUWS in Superior, and 97.7 WRNC LP Ashland, Northland College Community Supported Radio. You can also listen online at WRNCLP.org. And Perry Ellsmore. So we'll try to read some in advance and you can get into the routine. Now, we're going to have to have some help here for you. Won't you slide or a chair so he why can don't get a move? Can somebody help him with a chair? So he can get up on a chair? Me? Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, no, but they do need some help. But they've got a leak uh, in the roof. I'll, I'll yeah. get Joe the plumber. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Uh, well, that's true. That's just the right size Great. for you. He also needs another chair, Tim, for his sign so that he can. Yeah, you could. But let's get let's get you settled first, uh, Nathaniel, so that you're comfortable. This <laughs> <laughs> right over in the front, so that you can see it. 
the co chair. What's his last name? Nathaniel. Can you move Nathaniel? it up a little bit so that those. Ben Dix. Thank you. You're going to have to turn it when he tells you. He's <laughs> not <laughs> Nathaniel something. All right, he's going to hold it good for you. And whenever you're ready, Nathaniel, but we want to say thank you very much for being here. Uh, you're, you're on a chair, but the fact that you're willing to testify means you're nine feet tall. Okay? How, old, how old are you, Nathaniel? Nine years old. Speak up. I can hear you. Nine years old. All right. Thank you. Please go ahead, Nathaniel. Watch out, Bob. My name is Nathaniel. I am nine years old. Try, try to speak on the mic to the, the right. black okay. one with that, the, that one, right? There, there you go. Try to speak in there. And I say no open mind pit or everything that you see today will be dead and it will all be rotten. I finished. Oh. I'd like to share his, uh, his pictures here. Yes. He's got an um, uh, a eagle feather. I, I like that. It's, it's, Encouraging. Let's see that one. Nathaniel? Feather. It's a medicine feather. Oh, right there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nathaniel? <laughs> Do you spend a lot of time in the water? Yeah. A man of few words. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> does, does anybody want to ask Nathaniel a question? I want to say to Nathaniel, sweetie, you got it right. Short, sweet, and to the point. <laughs> Follow Nathaniel's lead. Yeah. They want you to be my speechwriter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. You had few but very powerful words. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Roy, okay, Roy Halverson, Jackie Rose, Bob Leskowski, Perry, and then Bob, Rob Granson, it looks like. Okay. Roy? Thank you. Partisans of the state of Wisconsin representatives. But the thing that, I'm not an implant, okay? I've been born and raised right around here, in fact, in Washburn, Mukwa, and now I reside in Marengo, all right? A few things kind of worry me is, first of all, we're talking about this mine. We're talking about the pollution and everything else, okay? But all you legislators have imposed upon, along with the federal government, that we need to take and provide schooling, okay? If any amount of people come into this area, where are they gonna go to school, these children? The schools are overloaded already. They have no money, okay? Second of all, the state and the federal has mandated that if EMS and fire services are provided, they need to get into the furthest reaching district of that municipality within 20 minutes. All right? Now, a new fire truck without equipment is $450,000. Now, you tell me what municipality can come up with that kind of money without paying interest on it, okay? Second of all, an ambulance is 135000 It takes another 75000 to equip it without the expenditure of volunteers that don't get no pay. Get up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and Senator Yao, you were there. It was 20 below zero. Wind was blown at a fire. All right? I was there also. Okay. Now, the thing that bothers me is that when all this mining comes into play, 
I lived in Bisbee, Arizona for 16 years. There's an open pit mine there. It is 1,800 feet deep. There is enough tunnelage under that area to reach from Bisbee, Arizona to New Jersey. There is tailings that is piled to the south of 92 that is half a mile wide and a mile and a half long and it's over 250 feet high. The amount of pollution that has come off these tailings sitting there has went into the aquifer. It has polluted all of the water south towards the border which is with Mexico. The cattle can't even drink that water. I have been there. I spent 16 years there. Okay? So when you take a look at what the legislation has done for fire and EMS, the amount of accountability that we have to have, the Marengo Volunteer Fire Department does reciprocity with Mellon, with Ashland, with Odena, and with Mason. Okay? All at no charge. And we do it with $30,000. All right? So, Mr. Yell was very appreciative, and we thank him very much for helping us get a grant for a pumper. Or a, uh, excuse me, a tanker. tanker. Right now, that fire department can run <coughs> and put on the ground 9,000 gallons of water within 15 minutes because of him. So you need to think about the schools. You need to think about the need to respond to an accident at one of these mines. What are you going to do? You're just going to say, you got to do it. So when you look at that in a 20-minute time window, you're putting volunteers up against a block wall. And I only enlisted in the Army for three years. The day I was, my enlistment was up, I wanted to see the old man. I said, I hope I'm going back by plane because that 19 days on a boat was a bugger. He says, I don't want to take and disillusion you, but here. He gave me a two year and eight month extension to guard the Berlin Wall. The time I got there, we had lost 28 of our troops because the Russians shot them. Well, I neutralized that situation. Every time they raised a rifle at one of our troops, I was 2,000 yards out and I shot the doggone foot off. I don't have any pity for people that come into and come into our area and impose on the schools and impose on EMS and fire. It's ludicrous. And I thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, your service, and your continuing active involvement uh, in volunteer firefighting. Thank you. Jackie Rhodes. Jackie? Jackie? No? 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 Had to go? Okay. Uh, okay, Bob Blaskowski. Is she coming? Is she, is she here? Okay. Bob, come on up. If, if, if you know somebody comes back, let, sort of let us know. We've got about 70 slips, but we're trying to move through. I'm also trying to move in people who've indicated they're for the bill, so uh, there, there are very few. Uh, Bob, please go ahead. Good morning. This one? No. No. Oh, 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 okay. What well, I'm going to speak to the, the preliminary impact, impact of the cost of the Ashland County Ferris Metallic Mining Project, if 
it ever materializes, its impact on Ashland County. I've spoken with the mayor. His concerns are city of Ashland housing, streets, water, sewer, medical services, all in the expansion, millions of dollars that could impact us. We don't have the money. City of Mellon, housing, street, water, sewer infrastructure, expansion, law enforcement, emergency, fire services, all under expansion due to the money. Expansion of the school facilities. Where are we going to get the money? We need to impact money badly. Ashland County Highway Department. New Road Rebuild, Highway 77. Speaking with the commissioner yesterday, he doesn't expect that road to last more than a year under the heavy load of the heavy traffic for the mine. We don't have any money. We would need a reroute of Highway 77, preferably around Mellon. We can't handle the traffic. The bridge on the Bad River will not handle the traffic. This would amount to millions of dollars, <coughs> plus in the interest of public safety. Ashton County Health and Human Services will need assistance. We really don't know how much money, but it will amount to a considerable sum. Another item I think we should concern, be concerned with is if we can provide mass transit to and from the mine of um, people working there. We would need some upfront money there. It all boils down to the impact fund from metallic mining would be badly needed up here just to get us a foothold if this expansion ever occurs. I'd like to change the pace a little bit. I'd like to talk to some of the items in the bill. One that's very dear to me personally is Chapter 160, Groundwater Pollution. Groundwater Pollution Management. I sincerely request everyone at this table to take this back to your committees and bring with you all the comments of the people about Lake Superior, the tributaries, and all the waters coming from that watershed. Our lake here is being fed in this area from the water from the Pinocchio Range. Please care for it. Thank you. affiliated with any party. Uh, uh, I feel that if I was, I probably wouldn't admit it. Okay. So I want to make that clear. Uh, I've heard a lot of people speak here before me, and there will be some after me, I'm sure, um, mostly negative against the mine. Uh, but until you've seen what I've seen in the Hurley area, the Hurley School District, and I can speak for Mellon because I have contacts with, with the Mellon School Board, Mercer, and so on. This mine opportunity is something we shouldn't take lightly, and I, I don't think we are taking lightly. Um, if you look at the unemployment rates in those communities, uh, the average per family income is poverty. These people have been living in poverty for probably the last 50 or 100 years. That's just our way of life. We don't know any better. But we suck it up and we move on. We have an opportunity to make that better. We've listened to, to some speakers from the central and southern part of the state. Frankly, I don't care what they say. They don't live here. I can also say that nobody in this room knows the Pinocchio Range better than I do or have spent more time in it than I have. That's a fact. I know the Pinocchio Range since I was a little boy. I grew up in it. My family, my grandfather, my father, we know this area. 
We're not from down south. We're not speculating. We're not, it's not like I'm talking about an area that I've never been to or been in. If I thought for one minute that this area was in jeopardy, the ecosystem was in jeopardy from this mine, I'd be singing a different tune right now, but it's not. We all know that. If this is all political, if I thought our watershed was going to be polluted, if our community of Hurley thought our watershed was going to be polluted, we wouldn't even consider this. This would be probably be a dead issue, but it's not. And I'd like to thank everyone here for their opinions, whether they're in favor or against, but please keep in mind that they don't, they don't have the access to what I see and what we go through in Hurley and these small communities. This is one opportunity, keeping in mind, I'm a big fan of Mother Nature as well. And we need these jobs, and we need to protect our ecosystems and our water. But we all believe, I think everybody in this room believes that there is a way to do that responsibly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Senator, Collins, Senator Collins got a question. Just a question. I appreciate your testimony. I served on the school board at one time too, so understand. Uh, we've had a lot of testimony that the, that the that the water system, the entire system of water coming out of the Pinocchio Hills, with the rivers, uh, uh, wetlands feed the rivers and so forth, all flow north through Ashland County to Lake Superior. Um, you seem to be implying by your testimony that that um, you would be concerned if the water was flowing through. Hurley to Lake Superior. Uh, is, do you agree with the, uh, almost all the testimony we've heard and conversations I've had that, that the water flows through Ashland County, not Iron County? Yes, it does. That's correct. Okay. Yes, it does. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your willingness to testify. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, mean, I, I can't see down at the end there. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, um, thank so, you. I'm often people get to hear me though <laughs> so i wanted to ask a question to the gentleman but he's already sat down oh, sir you had um mentioned you know uh, that it should be balanced so you can respond with the mic Terry, if you don't mind thank you thank okay. you so much you had mentioned that there should be balance and i i'm just wondering one have you actually had a chance to not just read the bill, but have full understanding of what points are in the bill. That, that's one of the things I, I, I'd like to I'm ask. familiar with, uh, with, the, with the past bill, but not with Mr. Collins' bill right now. Okay. And then, I'm, you know, I've had a chance to sit down and, and talk to the company, and I, I get the piece. I come from a community where poverty is truly a reality. 51% of African American men are unemployed. Um, and people have been living in poverty for a long time, and I'm in Madison, and I have to say that it doesn't seem like we always do legislation to change that. So what I wanted to ask is, I mean, you, you do agree with balance, though, in this, that the environment has to be protected in the process. Is that correct? There, there's no doubt in my mind we have to protect our environment. I, there's nobody that loves the, loves the woods or my family, my, my, my children, you know. Water is a very important resource. There's no doubt about it. I'm not questioning that, but I do know that there is a balance. If you look at our history of this country, you know, you look at the, you look at the railroads, the steel industry, we've always found a way to find a compromise and a balance and move forward. And so I, I, think, I think what I, what I want to know in that is that if you hear the concept as, as legislators, I mean, Senator Jock represents, you know, this area, and if He's the person who sent, and he does not feel that he's even being heard to articulate the views, or he feels, as the person who sent, that that balance is not there. Does that hold meaning for you? The only thing that I, I would really like to see come out of this is both parties come together, come to a, a solution that, that uh, encompasses all the tribes, all the communities, the surrounding communities, so that everybody can come together. You know, it's not, it's not us against them or, or them against us. We need to all come together. And they have to under, understand that we can't build a casino in Hurley, Wisconsin. We can't do it. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. We need to look at other means of income, of jobs. And right now, the only thing on our horizon 
is that mine? I thank you so much for your testimony and for your time. And I, I just want to say to you, I've not seen a person who has um, legitimately tried to make sure that um, they've played a part in trying to address this mine more than Senator Jauk. And, and so his leadership on the issue, I think, is very legitimate. And, and I'm, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a city girl, right? I didn't know anything about mines. I've emerged myself in this and even talked to individuals in Alaska where mining is like all over the place. And this is very similar to the pebble mine that, that they have there. And there are some specific issues that take away that balance that you speak about that we should get through the DNR that um, if Senator Jauk had not been sounding the clarion call, wouldn't have gotten changed in the bill that originally got done. And so I am only saying to you that I heard you speak about balance. And I really wish there was a way that, that everyone was being heard. And I just wanted to take the moment to say it, because you talked about it from a perspective of poverty and jobs. And I get that. I get that completely. But I wanted to make sure that you know what was wrong coming up and hearing people who may not agree with you and coming to the area that's affected. I, I, I think that they should have come right in the bowl of the place that's affected. And so that unwillingness is, is a challenge. And so I, I, I just want you to know that you have someone doing the very thing that you're saying, trying to create the balance in that way. Thank you. That's my Th question. Thank you for your service to your school board, Terry. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Rob? Rob? Is Rob here? Is he coming up? All right, Rob's coming up. Isla Dro uh, Drost, James Drost, Mike Wiggins, Chairman Wiggins, and John, I think it's Schneider. Looks like John Schneider. And so, Rob, please, uh, Rob, Rob, is it? Ganson. Ganson, please go ahead. Thanks for being here today. Uh, this is what democracy looks like. And democracy is exactly what the authors of the bill are trying to avoid. So thanks for, very much for being here to listen to us. GTAC is a subsidiary of the Klein Group, who have already been cited for 48 water quality violations in two other states. So we can take promises of clean mining with a grain of salt. GTAC is pouring the Kool-Aid but most of us aren't drinking it. Here in the North, we already have businesses that employ hundreds of people. Businesses like Brothers and Northern Cleaning here in Ashland, who give back much more than jobs to the community, who never bought politicians, never got those politicians to let them write legislation to deregulate their industries, never paid a failed politician to pretend to be a concerned citizen at a hearing, never poisoned entire ecosystems, or threatened our way of life. If we must have industry, these are the industrial models we should encourage here in the North. GTAC and hired politicians don't want us to know about the contents of 250 core samples. Is that because of the sulfides, mercury, et cetera, in the overburden, or because they disclose, disclose something else, the real pay dirt around the low-grade iron ore? It is a travesty that a corporation can spend millions buying politicians, buy a mining bill, all out in the open. Have we really come to a point that such corruption is okay in Wisconsin? Nobody seems to want to talk about the huge coal-fired power plant that would be needed to operate the biggest open pit mine on the planet, or all the nitrates and nitrites from a multiple Hiroshima-scale bombing that would blast a hole a thousand feet deep and five miles long. Most of us do know about the acid leaching sulfides, the mercury, arsenic, lead, etc., that would surely leach into the groundwater that would even be used to fill wetlands. We know what happened due to Minnesota's weak mining laws. The 100 plus miles of the St. Louis River, once pristine, where all the wild rice died and the water and fish became toxic. We know about the thousands, not hundreds, of jobs in the tourist industry, 
jobs that depend on our clean and beautiful natural landscape. We know the route of the contamination from the headwaters to the rivers through a sovereign nation that has not been consulted, the creeks, the vast and sacred wildlife nursery, estuary, and the Kakagan Sloughs, and finally Lake Superior. We know how many people depend on the fish of Shenanigan Bay for a living or for food and recreation. We know that sustainable jobs are the real backbone of the North. Forestry, tourism, farming, tech jobs, etc. With ever more sustainable jobs and industries on the horizon. We know that the biggest strip mine on the planet is at cross purposes with these sustainable jobs. Please consider these things and the huge infrastructure demands that would be put on our small municipalities before you sell us out to a big corporation with a miserable ecological track record for a few temporary jobs that would go to unemployed, experienced miners from everywhere but here. Corruption will not rule the day. Thank you. Thank you very much for the you're listening to a live uh, broadcast about mining regulations in Wisconsin here on 97.7 WRNC LP Ashland and Wisconsin Public Radio Stations 90.9 WUWS in Ashland and 91.3 KUWS in Superior. Bachelor's and a master's degree. My, my husband is James Drost. He has a bachelor's and master's degree from the University of Minnesota, Wisconsin in mining and, manu and metallurgical engineering, and a great deal of what I'm saying comes from him. <laughs> okay. And by the way, you have a copy of this on your table, although it's, I'm edited a bit. We all know that in life, there's always a give and take. If we want something, we have to pay for it somehow. This mining bill is no different. Our legislatures must be judicious and wisely consider all the pros and cons put forth, keeping in mind the Ninth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which states, quote, the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage other rights retained by the people, unquote. This mining bill, if passed, will mean that the Wisconsin government is denying thousands of people their right to clean water and air, good health, productive land, stable home values, and many other intangible qualities of good living. Is this not similar to the contentious relationship between Great Britain and our struggling colonies, <coughs> excuse me, when they threw off the yoke of tyranny? Over and over, we've heard how Wisconsin, and especially the Bad River watershed area, is going to greatly benefit from the Kogebic taconite mine. We've heard that there will be 700 jobs or more provided by the mining companies, and that the multiplier effect could generate another 3,000. The Bad River area will potentially, possibly get 30%, and the state of Wisconsin may get 70% of the funds. That was in last year's bill. It's possible that southern Wisconsin could generate jobs in mining and equipment factories, and there's also many college-degreed people who would get jobs and employment. But let's be honest, the lion's share of the benefits will go to the Gogebic Taconite Company. We can see that all these positives are possible, but we do emphasize that the area will be destroyed and a thousand years may never make it right again. 30 years versus a thousand years plus that's a pretty bad ratio of give and take. And what about some of the other liabilities? Let's uh, itemize a few of them separately. First, the general health and welfare of many of the people in the area will be affected in a negative fashion. Some items affecting health are dust, noise, fumes, smog, sulfites, and heavy metal ions in drinking water. Long-range health effects are birth defects, emphysema, silicosis, mesothelioma, cancer, and male infertility, to name just a few. A study of the health issues caused by Reserve Mining Company at Silver Bay, Minnesota, tells a grim story that includes all those listed above. My husband worked on that project in the U.S. Bureau of Mines. Groundwater and other aquifers are limited in the Bad River watershed due to hard rock shields. The World Resource Institute presently rates the Bad River watershed as being low to medium in water risk. 
We believe that if this bill is passed, <clears throat> the World Resource Institute will escalate the rating to extreme risk. The increased truck and car traffic will reduce the safety on the roads and increase considerably the ambient fugitive dust. Just look at areas around frack sand mines or look at the horrendous traffic problems in Williston, in, um, North Dakota. And by the way, we are very f familiar with frack sand mines. We have one right next to a group of friends of ours. It's horrendous. The most, number four, the most complex topic in discussion is the economy and jobs. GTAC has promised the mine operation will provide 700 jobs, but generally, they don't point out that most of these jobs will require trained and skilled employees, and that means most of the positions will be filled by outsiders. The multiplier effect in the area will be more than offset by the present jobs lost in the tourist industry and other related industries. These are long-term and stable jobs. This effect is actually already showing up in western Wisconsin's frack sand mining areas. Number five, we've seen no end to the statement that, <coughs> statements that are partial truths but are said in such a way that they hide the ugly whole truth. Following example is one, I'm paraphrase. Companies say, quote, iron ore is not iron oxide. Also, iron sulfide is not considered an ore. And also, we don't mine iron sulfide, okay. These are all true statements, but stop before they are fully stating that these miners will move millions of tons of overburden laced with heavy metal sulfides and iron silicates, which is the source of asbestos. The rains will flush these sulfides, fractured silicates, asbestos, and everything else down the streams and rivers into Lake Superior after they've polluted everything else along the way. The big winner in passing this bill will be GTAC, a subsidiary of the Klein Group, which is a huge worldwide conglomerate with absolutely no ties to the well-being of the state of Wisconsin. Those that find employment because of the mine will benefit monetarily, and maybe the states, counties, and even the towns will. But the losers will be those that lose their present jobs, those that lose their health, those that lose their property values, and that's a biggie, those that lose their clean, fresh water and air, those that lose their quality of life, and those that lose their pristine surroundings. These losers will be the ones that pay the bill for the winners. When this short-term mining of 30 years is done, all you'll have left in the Bad River watershed is a big hole in the ground and filthy polluted water and ravaged land. The Bad River Indian tribes will be the biggest losers. Their land, water, food sources, culture, health, and possibly even their businesses will be corrupted and many lost. We thought this nation's mal <coughs> excuse me, maltreatment of Indian nations ended about 100 years ago, but perhaps greed doesn't ever take a sabbatical. Most of we older folk will remember that the Western movies <coughs> had Indian chiefs making the statement, white man speak with forked tongue. Well, perhaps it's not great prose, but it does speak volumes. Thank you. James? Uh, I guess asking you not to applaud didn't work. <laughs> but try, try. We, we've had very few people uh, who've had some register for the bill. We've had very few registering speak for the bill. And maybe part of the reason is that, that they don't want to face a large crowd that disagrees with them. And so if you wish to speak, it have been un uncomfortable, please feel free to let us know that you wish to speak in favor of the bill. We're, not, we're trying to give every voice a chance to express itself. So please, thank you. Okay, my name is Jim Drost, and as my wife said, I'm a graduate of the University of Wisconsin in engineering. Now, over the last 40 years, we own property up here in Bayfield County, part of the Bad River watershed. And I have explored almost all of that watershed. I have found iron silicates right here in the area where the um, Ponoke Range is, which was the problem that reserve mining had when they were dumping their taconite tailings or waste into Lake Superior. So let me begin here. 
Now, I'm not going to be saying everything that's on your papers. I have to shorten it to give time for other people. GTAC, repeating history. On the shore of Lake Superior, reserve processed ore into iron taconite pellets and discharged 67,000 tons of waste material into Lake Superior every day. And then, in 1969, after a considerable amount of complaining by various people losing their jobs, being poisoned, and what have you, uh, the Lake Superior Enforcement Conference concluded that, quote, there is presumptive evidence in the records to indicate that the discharge from reserve mining company endangered the health and welfare of persons in the states other than Minnesota. History records that the legal battle went on for 13 years before the discharge and Lake Superior lawsuit was settled. You can expect maybe longer on this bill. Uh, there is a, still a dead zone 25 miles out from Silver Bay, Minnesota. And it will never probably ever come back because every storm, the silt and the asbestos fibers come back up from that mess. GTAC would be, GTAC, uh, would be a much smaller scope. The, the waste silt contains silica, asbestos, sulfide ions, and metallic ions, and more. <clears throat> and are all, all are poisonous in one way or another. Why does this odious mine project keep surfacing? It is our opinion that we have many legislatures from the state of Wisconsin that do not understand the cruelty of this kind of mining, nor do they understand the environment fragility of the Bad River watershed area. Uh, combining the cruelty of the mining and the environmental for, uh, fragility makes a recipe for total annihilation. And, and because of that, I can't even agree with mining there at all. The mining that we are discussing today thumbs its nose at the, the federal court's decision on reserve mining dis reserve mining's disregarding and violating of the state and international environmental laws. What we have here is a greater disaster in the making than reserve mining uh, discharging their tailings into waste rock, uh, tailings, waste rock, directly into Lake Superior. Why? Let's look at some of the, of the law changes delineated in this bill. Now, I, I, I don't do all of them, so. Uh, the Wisconsin Resource Agency, Natural Resource Agency, alias Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources is no longer in charge. So forget that. They will not protect you. Though the bill refers to the environmental impact study, the likelihood of one being performed is nil and none. Number four, the reclamation plan section simply removes the requirements that would trump the lie that is put forth that the Pinocchio Range can be mined in an environmentally friendly manner. That's a quote from them. There are several legislatures making the, uh, the statement that this mining operation would be environmentally friendly. We are moved to ask what knowledge and what background qualifies them to make this statement. Number six, the bill is changing water rights to suit the mining companies. This includes destroying the rivers, lakes, shores of the lakes, etc making unlimited water withdrawals, and discharging wastewater in waste wherever it is most convenient. Now please refer to your handout uh, uh, for the research done with the Wisconsin Superior Basin Partnership. It would be the last three pages that are behind your thing. Um, on page five, where it says, what's the problem? Please note that they say, our watersheds are surprisingly fragile. And that's an understatement. Further on down five, you will see a picture of a dump truck. And below, you will see that 50 dump truck loads of clay and sand are flush into Lake Superior, excuse me, every day via, every day via the Bad River. Uh, and after GTAC begins, Opening, uh, opening up the mine, and after the mine is in operation, one could conservatively 
estimate 500 to 1,000 tons. There's no way you can have this stuff sitting around. Come the rain, they're going to be using 100 uh, or 31 million gallons of water a day. That's to start with. But like reserve, they will probably up that to as much as four times that. So between that and the water, it's going to flush a lot of stuff down the drain. And then if you look at uh, mark, the, the pages mark number six and number 34, uh, if this bill is passed, most of the tributaries and the Bad River will look like the muddy ones on those pages. Does this translate to a mining bill and a mining operation that is friend, environmentally friendly? We believe it will be a repeat of reserve mining, only in it will be polluting both land and Lake Superior. Now, the asbestos. Just kind of, kind of bring it to a conclusion. Yeah. We got a lot of people that yeah, want to speak. I just got one paragraph left. Uh, Make a brief. The asbestos is going to be the big problem. GTAX usually, uh, okay, this will lead to the ruin of almost all the Bad River waterways leading to the lake. Ruination of the Bad River watershed will probably last for a thousand years before any real recovery can be seen. How, how can the net gain of a few hundred jobs, if it happens, for a flash of 30 years be justified against the, uh, this kind of destruction that could last for more than a thousand years? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mike Wiggins, is Mike here? Good. Uh, and, I, and if I heard you correctly, I think you said you didn't think there would be an environmental impact statement. There will be an environmental impact statement. The real question is under the bill as to whether or not there'll be one or two because the Corps of Engineers has stated. The Native people also knew that the Creator had given everything for us to survive on this earth.